when the Germans marched in the first week, they had a pogrom. And because my, my, um, our home was such a, was a new building, was such a beautiful home, that it attracted attention. Even though our name was not on the list for the pogrom, we were, st we were you know, the uh, German soldier, we were looking through the window, and we saw that he said, well, what about here? And so they said, the uh, Ukraine, okay, let's go. There was a whole bunch of them with a few soldiers, German soldiers. So there was a big pogrom a week after they entered our town. And uh, my mother and I were beaten up terribly. They threw my mother out into the courtyard, and they beat her with, uh, with guns. She had, I remember my sister and I were standing on the doorway, and we were screaming, and her blood was gushing out of her head. And I remember that sound. It went like zzzz, that kind of a sound. And after a while, she stopped screaming, and they said, well, you know, sh she's done. So my sister pulled me away from the doorway. And the next thing I know, I was lying under a bed in a bedroom. And apparently they were looking for me. And I must have been unconscious, I don't know. But I opened up my eyes and I tried to get up. And I tried to say, here I am. And I realized that nothing was coming out of my mouth. And I couldn't move. There was something lying under the bed. And I tried to reach it so I could get up. And I couldn't do that. And I probably went, uh, was unconscious again, off and on. And because I remember waking up a few times, and they were looking for me. My mother's brother, Friddle, came to help. And um, the next thing I knew, I was lying on a couch in the living room. And I was covered with a sheet over the, I think I had a, like a sitter under my head. And my father was crying. And they said, uh, and my uncle and my father thought I was dead. And at that time, it, I was uh, seven years old. And I thought they were going to bury me um, alive. I was like so frightened. I kept thinking, oh my God, I'm alive here. I'm, I'm alive. You know, don't leave me. And they kept looking at me and covering me up. And, and they were busy with my mother because she had seven holes in her head. And they crushed her, uh, all her bones in her head. And she had a broken bone right over her eye and her nose. And, and they were trying to, you know, um, treat her and, and try to wash all the blood away from her. She was gushing with blood. And they left me alone, and I thought, you know, that was the end of me. Luckily, my sister, some, for some reason or other, wasn't even touched. But my mother had a friend visiting. It was on a Friday night, and her baby was killed in the house, nine-month-old baby. And um, that was the beginning of, you know, so of course, the next morning, my father gathered up my mother and I and my sister, and he moved us into a uh, poor section of the town. And we were not allowed to get any medical attention. And then we found out later on that many people were killed and injured. But my mother and I were one of the most severely injured. And my, I must have had a blow to my head so severe that it probably caused um, like a stroke on my right side because I was paralyzed for almost a year. And my head was like a ball, very soft. And and my whole face started was swollen, and I closed my eyes were all swollen. And I remember lying in bed with my mother, and she was all bandaged up, and she was praying, "Please God, let her let her die. She's deaf and mute and paralyzed." And but my mind was working. I knew what was going on, but I couldn't communicate for a long time. And at that time is when we met one of my father's. Um, um, clients that he um, used to deal with. You know, he was a farmer that lived three kilometers from, um, from our town in Shipkov. And he came, he must have heard what happened. So he came and uh, he looked at my mother and I and he was like crying. He couldn't believe that this, is, this happened. And I, have, I heard him say, well, what did this child do to deserve this? And he started coming around, bringing eggs and butter once in a while. And this is how our, our friendship started with him. What was his name? His name was Pavlo Gavasimchuk. He, he had on a, a huge coat with pockets. And he would put the food in his pocket. And he couldn't give as much because he was very poor. A piece of bread, maybe a little bit of soup, a bottle of water. 
and he would try once a day or maybe every other day come into the barn like he would be getting hay out for the horses you know he had always not just to come in he always came out doing something that wouldn't be suspicious for anybody and he would um, give us that stuff and once a night he gave us a path for elimination and that was the most that was the most dangerous part of the whole eight ten months of hiding because once a night the same thing he would call the dog Brisco and the dog would be running around all over make sure there's no one around and to and he would go from the outside of the barn Pablo and take out a piece of the sled and my father would crawl out with the path and not for, not far from there there was a little river and he would throw it into the river and but it was a very dangerous thing to do because y you never knew you know if anybody even though the dog you know it's still a dog and so when he could of course when he couldn't it would go on for more than a day or at night it was usually at night that that would happen the piece of bread that we had we had a share with mice the mice were always around they were our best buddies they wanted the bread that you had to hold it like this otherwise they would grab it out of your hand and and I was very fearful always of mice and but you get used to it lice like unbelievable we were covered with lice by three o'clock in the afternoon we had no light at all the only light we had was between the slats of the wood and um, and in order for my father and mother and myself to keep saying my father would teach me the Bible by heart I knew the whole Bible by heart every day you know he would teach me something else and when he would forget a word I would remind him so I s became like very religious always reciting something from the Bible and also uh, Pablo my mother asked for wool and she started knitting I don't know how she was knitting with all the mice there and, 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 and the lies but I don't know she was knitting I remember her knitting all kinds of sweaters for the girls and my father he would wood and my father would carve shoes for, from wood just to do something and then the children would go to church and everybody wanted to know what did, who made you these beautiful shoes and who made you <laughs> you know he had to create all kinds of stories for that but they were busy up to three o'clock in the afternoon then it was pitch black and um, and this is how we so it's it's like if someone would come and tell me I would never believe that anyone could live like this for 18 months but we did we lived for 18 months with very little food no water except just a drink to wet our lips you know and uh, and the pot and the mice <laughs>